Hey guys, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to create the shockwave animation inside of Blender. So I just opened up this uh, file I have here, and you can follow along in a tutorial that I made earlier, but uh, in this video I'm just going to show you how to animate it. So first thing I'm going to do is just hide the subsurf modifier, because it'll uh, lag on our computer if we keep those on. And I'm going to add an empty. So press Shift A, empty, and then plane axis. Then I'll select the shockwave again and open up both of the displace modifiers that I have on it. And we're going to ch change the texture coordinates from local to object. And then in this new tab right here, we're going to select the empty. And if you select the empty and move it around, you can now see that the displacement moves based on the location of our empty. And I want this animation to be like 4 seconds, so that's about 100 frames at 24 frames per second. And at the first frame, I want our empty to be right here. And I'll press I to insert a keyframe and select Location, Rotation, Scale. And then at frame 100, I'm just going to move it over to the other side and do the same exact thing. So now if we go back to the beginning of our animation and press Alt A to play it, you can see that it starts to move around and look more organic. And you can turn on the subdivision surface modifier to see it better, but once you add both of them, it starts to slow down a lot. So I'm just going to hide them and pause the animation. I'll just open up this timeline a little bit more and switch it to the graph editor. I'm going to make sure the empty is selected. And right now, these lines are curved, so that means when the animation starts, it slowly picks up speed and then slowly loses speed. But we want it to be uh, the same speed throughout, so make sure everything's selected in the graph editor, and press V, and select Vector. And so now, it should start off at the same speed and end at the same speed, like that. So now I'll just change it back to the timeline and stop the animation. And we want this uh, to start out as nothing. So on frame 0, or frame 1, we're going to select the shockwave and press S0 so that it's scaled down to nothing. And we'll press I, location, rotation, scale. And then in about half a second, which is 12 frames, we want it to be a little bigger than its at normal size. So press Alt-S, which makes it go back to the normal scale. And then we'll scale it up to about there. And press I, Location, Rotation, Scale. And then uh, at frame 75, I'm going to press Alt-S, and then I, Location, Rotation, Scale. So now if we play it from the beginning, you can see it immediately gets really big, and then it just shrinks slowly. And I think it gets too big, so I'm just going to go back to that keyframe and scale it down a little bit like that, and press I again and select it. Now we can play it again, and that's looking good. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit more, like that. And that should be good. And now we, what we want this to do is fade out towards the end of the animation. So to do that, I'm just going to open up a new window here and switch it to the node editor. And if we go into rendered view, we, you can see our material here. I'm just going to duplicate this mix shader and transparent shader and plug both of them in. And if we set this factor to zero, all it's doing is showing this material, our original material. But as we drag the factor up to one, it's making our um, material transparent. And once it's one, it's completely transparent and there's nothing there. So what we're going to do is animate this factor value. So at frame 12, we'll press I while hovering over the factor. And at frame... 100, we'll set this to 1 and press I again. So now we can play this animation and we can see that it starts to fade out over time like that. And I want it to fade out a little before frame 100. 
maybe frame 85 so I'll just make that one and then insert the keyframe now we can play it and start to see and that looks pretty good so I'm just going to close this window here and I'll come over to the render settings and then you can uh, change it from PNG to any of the movie formats you want I'm just going to select that then I'm going to go over to my folder and save it as shockwave video and now you can render it out just by pressing animation and if you want you can increase the samples to however many you want in the video that I showed you in the beginning it was rendered at one sample but it was very grainy 10 samples is pretty good I might just increase mine to about 50 and do my animation so that's pretty much it for this tutorial thanks for watching I hope you learned something new and I'd like to see your results in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. Thanks for watching.